On this journey, we knew there would be surprises in store. We expected to meet new people and hear untold stories, to learn the truths behind the lore. Along the way, we discovered the hidden gems of Ireland. We arrived in Ireland on a shoestring budget. Knowing that time and resources would be limited, we made the best of what we could with what we had. Please bear with us as we strive for improvements. Spellman's Motel. There was a previous building that was there that was built between the 1840s to the 1850s. It served as a lodging house during the famine. John Spellman would later purchase the property. He had the original building raised and the motel was built on the original foundation of the previous building. The construction of the motel that you see before you now happened in the 1960s. Activity includes a spirit of a boy that fell from the railroad bridge near the property and other odd activities such as noises, voices and shadows reported. Still in operation today, Spellman's is a staple of Balladrine, Ireland. From the steeple of the church that caught our attention the night we arrived, to the small and cozy lobby that greets you when you enter, to the dining area, which, in our opinion, has some of the best coffee you'll ever have. A painting of the motel hangs, greeting you as you walk down the hallways. A sizable room that is now used for storage, where we would stop and meet and catch up with what was going on. Many may pass through here, not giving this motel a second glance or thought. But if you're ever in Balladrine, Ireland, we strongly urge for any paranormal or historical enthusiast to please check in and stay for a while. You won't be disappointed. What we're doing in here, for anyone who is listening, is trying to gain a better understanding of where you are now, what you may be doing, what you see, whether it's something else or us. I believe this is Jimmy's room. Jimmy, if I'm correct on that, by all means, please feel free to speak with us. Upon review, something very significant was noticed. The camera would be operating normally until we would try to reach out to Jimmy or any spirit. It would then blur without any reason. Anything you have to say, we welcome. And I hope you know that we've entered with respect.
your son body is laughing in my head when you said you can do it by any means possible. He started burping. <laughs> As, but it had a, a, a flavor to it that was like alcohol, like a, like a not beer. Mm -hmm. it, if this is him, I don't know if he drank, I don't know this person, but like liquor, but like liquor on an empty stomach. Okay. Because there was that kind of weird, like mm -hmm. dead, that weird hollow feeling. And apparently that was funny. outside and I sort of bring my hand to my face and I look. The stone for the throat chakra is gone. Mm. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. I didn't put it on there. I have a chakra ring that I was wearing and didn't realize one of the stones had gotten knocked out. And the stone that got knocked out was the throat chakra. Mm. We didn't know what that meant. Seeing that, it's starting to make sense. If you look closely, you can see what appears to be an orb. It comes up beside my head and towards Vanessa. Watch again where it's slowed down. You can see this orb, left side of me, up towards Vanessa. What's even more interesting is what Vanessa says next. see in a home, 
sense that I've got coins, which I can't quite figure out, but they're, but they're not, but they have that, that feel, that vibe to them. It's reflecting, so you know it's like a void over there. Okay. Just keep hearing, where's my coffee? Where's my, where's my coffee? Everything was about normality. Staples. Keeping things as normal and as uniform as possible because it was the only thread. I'm flashing red. I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. What's me moving?
Would you like to have a seat in the chair over there, Jimmy? say it loud enough in your own mind that we can pick it up on some of these devices that would be very appreciated. This may have no bearing on anything at all, but what I'm getting in my mind is these images, these odd-looking animals, almost like lemurs mm -hmm. and trees, hmm. or like capuchin monkeys. Yeah. I have no idea what that means. So it would be interesting to find out. Yes. You may need headphones. Some of them got distorted earlier, but I couldn't tell if it was my shadow being casted, reflected or not, so we'll have to look over all of that. It's just going to make it cooler.
to watch yourself. You're going to walk into a okay. side of the door. Watch yourself. Okay. Okay. Nobody was in there. Fudge. Okay, honey. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you okay? Yeah. circles under your eyes. Very dark circles. Oh, 
my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Y'all might look better than this standing up. <laughs> Just lay there and make sure you're rested, okay? Okay, so we're out here with Mike out behind the hotel while I was having that episode with Vanessa in our room. What happened, Mike? All the outside lighting went down, as you can see. These yeah. lights are on a different system, but the apartment lights and the two big blood lights, gone. <laughs> We're sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Very sorry. Okay. 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 This is just how we... If you notice, in the slowed down replay, you can see the orb coming from right to left of the screen. As it heads left, it just disappears. This was a new battery, new memory card. The static cam was set up and was running for 22 minutes and 6 seconds when it suddenly just stopped recording. The card was fine, the camera didn't shut off, just stopped recording. Okay, so we decided to go ahead and grab the camera um, because Gwen and I were just sitting here in the room discussing what our plans were for this evening and lo and behold we have three knocks on the door. Now she hopped up immediately, we grabbed the camera, we are coming out here to take a look and there is not a soul in sight either way. Not a soul in sight. Now what you need to know about this, what we consider fairly important, is that there were absolutely no footsteps. Like the boards creak and all, we didn't hear none of that. None of that. And you can hear it when you walk down this hallway. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear it. And as I walk, you can hear the creak. There was none of that. There was a very distinct knocking on our motel room door and uh, yes it was three knocks no that does not mean demonic that does not mean anything negative it just means your average person hold on hold on see yep see you can hear somebody else's footsteps as they come down so you can see what it would sound like okay and the interesting thing about this particular hotel. You can hear somebody locking the door behind them. You can hear this lovely, in this lovely little hallway here of this very old hotel or motel, you can hear people walking up and down the hallway. You're gonna hear us as we walk. You can hear the creaking. You can hear doors latching. You can hear all of that. There's the creaking. And none of that was present when these three knocks happened on our door. Of course, you're going to have people that assume that because it was three, that it is symbolizing the Holy Trinity, that it's something negative. People tend to go that route when they're talking about something like this, and that actually isn't the case. Think about it. Think about when somebody knocks on a door. What do they automatically do? Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. It's just habit. People don't even realize that they do it. Now, one, another really, really, really important thing that you need to know about this particular motel is that people come here to pass away. Not everybody, but in this particular hallway, this is kind of known as that area. People feel so comfortable in this town and with a family that actually owns and runs this motel that they come here when they know that it's getting close to their time. They feel as if they're surrounded by family. They feel very comfortable. They feel taken care of. And in this particular hallway, there have been 
many instances, many, many instances, where people have taken their last breath. In this particular room right here, which is room five, this is where Gwen and I actually had our experiences. Mine a, a little bit more traumatic, bless Gwen's heart, she was able to, to kind of pull me out of it. But it's, it's very powerful, but in a totally human kind of way. So in room five, as I was explaining, Gwen and I came in here the other night just to do what we would call a mini investigation and to see if we were able to communicate or connect at all with a previous resident of this room. And it was quite calm. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary from the get-go. Uh, we were sitting in total darkness, uh, with the exception of the grid that Gwen had, and uh, we had the night vision camera going, and just trying to connect and talk to this previous resident in any way that we could. Unfortunately for me, any way that he could meant allowing me to feel what he felt upon his passing, which was the compressions that were given to him through CPR. I could feel them through my back. Um, became very disoriented, um, severe pain, in the right portion of my head. Gwen had chest pains, um, which would be accurate for what we were told after the fact. Um, Gwen actually had to take me to the room and kind of help me get through whatever it was that I was going through because it really affected me greatly. Um, but again, I want to stress, this wasn't intended to be negative or hurtful to either one of us. Sometimes we need to realize the only way they can let us know that they're speaking with us or that they're trying to make any contact whatsoever is through emotion, sensations, physical pains. Um, you have to understand, for the most part, you know, spirits, they don't come through and just sit down next to you and start chatting. That's, that's not how they do it, at least not all the time. Sometimes they need you to feel they need you to feel, and that is what... Okay, that was really weird that just happened. We know for a fact, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know what just happened. Um, we just started filming this with a knock on the door, and we had a full battery, an absolutely full battery. And no sooner did we get to this, and I'm explaining what this particular past resident put me through, not being me, but allowing me to feel. The battery died, the camera completely shut down, and then guess what? And then, it turned right back on. Well, tell them what happened before it turned on. Uh, before it turned on, um, what you said to the spirit. What I said, what I said um, to the spirit is I said, come on, Jimmy, give us a break. We're just trying to talk to you. Camera came right back on. I didn't have to prompt it or anything. It just nope. automatically came on. Exactly. Which was odd because the screen was open. Mm -hmm. This particular camera, um, you have to manually open the screen and it will pop on. The screen was already open. The camera just pops on by itself. Exactly. So these are those little things that make us question even further what goes on after you pass. Um, we're not looking to prove anything to anybody. We don't need it proven to ourselves. But these are those little things that keep us going and keep us wanting to dig deeper and to talk to people and find out what their experiences are and see if they're similar. And to speak to the deceased so that they know that even though they're not here physically with Okay, we are now filming again. <laughs> okay. Once again, camera turned off through no coercion from us, um, simply because we're doing what we're doing. And it's 
It's not that they don't want to speak. It's not that they don't want to get their message out there. Sometimes their energy frequencies can affect or interact or alter different energies between humans, technology, whatever, and they can, they can cause a disconnect. They can do so many different things. And that's kind of why another reason why we're doing this is to find out what all of those instances are. On this trip alone, <laughs> we have dealt, and Gwen's laughing behind the camera, we have dealt with so much interference. Filming, doing audio. Power outages in the building. Yes, power outages in the building. That is a very good thing to bring up, Gwen, because during my situation where Gwen had to take me to the room and help kind of pull this energy off of me, the power went out in the entire backside of the building. Entire backside. So that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal. Um, matter of fact, that has happened here before where the power went out in the entire building with, I think they said it's three main boxes, breaker boxes, yes. went out in the entire building, but nowhere else. And that was when another paranormal team was here. When another paranormal team was here. So, this is definitely a hidden gem. Yes, most definitely a hidden gem. Um, most people might drive past, might not give it a second look. Um, we're so glad we weren't one of those people. The Tale of Two Jimmies. While finishing up this episode, some strange events happened. Attempting research on the motel, an obituary popped up. Same first name as the Jimmy at the motel, just like in room five. It was then clarified the Jimmy in the obituary was a different one to the one that we were attempting to communicate with. However, reports of the other Jimmy, the one from the obituary, had been seen by people in the motel. One person, in particular, had seen this Jimmy in the house he was renting before being spooked and causing the witness to return back to live at the motel. Oddly enough, the Jimmy from the obituary was the one who previously owned the house before this tenant had moved in. Is it possible that we were in contact with one or both of them? Did the other Jimmy follow the gentleman back to the motel when he was spooked away from the house? We also still have questions about any possible connection of my chakra ring and the stone for the throat mysteriously disappearing. Vanessa's throat was affected during this investigation as mine would be affected during our investigation at Moore Hall in episode one. The synchronicities of these events still leaves questions. We have more episodes on this location to follow this one. More interviews and more stuff to see.